Leo. Alright, what's up, Facebook? So, so, yeah, trying some new formats today. Seeing how that works out. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll just have to keep trying stuff till I find something that works. How about that? Okay. Uh, Prophet David Taylor here for your <clears throat> weekly live prophetic word. And today's prophetic word is arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord. So I know the Holy Spirit has some interesting things to say. So we're going to say a word of prayer and we're going to jump right in. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty word. Thank you for your written word. Thank you for your prophetic word. I ask you to uh, speak through me, O oh God. I surrender my whole self to you, Lord, so you can speak through my mouth so that the saints of God will hear what you want spoken. Thank you for it. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> now, today's prophetic word is arise, O Lord. Now, our scripture reference is going to be Psalm 3, the third Psalm. Psalm 3, the third Psalm, is going to be our scripture reference for today's prophetic word. Now, if you don't know anything about the Psalms, the majority of the Psalms are music. Okay, it's music. And many times before you read the passage, before you read the chapter, there'll be some little instructions at the top. Sometimes that's the writer of the Psalms because King David did not write all of them. King David wrote most of them. Sometimes that's the instructor of the Psalm saying what instrument to play this music on. Sometimes it's a dynamic marking. Sometimes it's a performance marking to tell them how loud or how soft or how to play, just like in sheet music. Okay. Sometimes it's a it's a note in terms of uh, what the song or the psalm was written about. Okay. So the psalms are primarily music. So you have to hear them set to music to get the full impact of what's being said. But we're reading them. And remember, we're reading a translation. We're reading them. If uh, English is your first language, we're reading them in English. But they're primarily uh, music, and they're set to music, and they're written in Hebrew. Okay? All right. Now, so we're going to go to Psalm 3. And I'm going to read it out of two different translations. I'm going to read it out of the King James Version, and I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Here we go. Psalm 3, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. And when you come on the broadcast, please like and share, because when you like and share the video, uh, it helps the algorithm. Same if you're watching it on YouTube. And then also when a prophetic word is going forth, we want as many people as possible to hear it. So God can bless them as well. So that was the NIV. Uh, excuse me, that was uh, King James. Now I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Now, why is that relevant, and why is that something that the Spirit of God wanted us to focus on today? I'll tell you why. If some of y'all looking at me right now, and some of y'all listening to me right now, you're tired. Do you know why you're tired? <laughs> you're tired because this pandemic thing has stretched out longer than anybody thought it would, and because you've had to adjust to the new normal, you've had to change your lifestyle, 
you still had changes going on in your life, regular life changes amidst unprecedented sickness and death, amidst unprecedented economic upheaval, amidst a whole bunch of things. And some of y'all looking at me right now, you tired. You tired because after a while, Pastor Bill Winston says we're not supposed to be in long fights because long fights tend to wear you out. And after a while, all that fighting can begin to wear you down. It can make you start to ask, you know, is there ever going to be deliverance? Is, is, am I going to get a break? Is some, <clears throat> something ever going to open? <clears throat> Are things ever going to change from the conditions we've been living in for a while? So the Spirit of God wanted us to focus on Psalm 3 so we can take the Word of God and stand on it and pull deliverance into our lives. What do I mean by that? I mean that all the promises of God come by faith, okay? If you want, everybody says things like God has all power. That's right. God is omniscient. He knows everything. That's right. But how do I get his knowledge in my life? How do I get his power working in my life? And the answer to that question is by faith, okay? So I'm gonna give you the steps again. You have to believe it, you have to receive it, you have to say it, and you have to obey it. That's how you get it out here in your life. So to believe it, you gotta hear it. And that's what apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, deacons, and elders are for. Anybody that preaches the word of God because you, or prophesies the word of God or teaches the word of God because you have to be called, anointed, and appointed. You gotta be sent by God to do that because the message is from the Lord. That's why the vessel is not the thing. The message from the Lord is the thing, okay? But you gotta hear it so you can believe it because faith comes by hearing. You gotta hear it so you can believe it, okay? But <clears throat> believing it means you believe that it's true or it's possible. Like when people say God is able, that means that you believe he has the capability of bringing deliverance. That's right. But <clears throat> receiving it means he's going to do it for me. <laughs> that's the difference between believing and receiving. Okay? And that's why some Christians will shout and, and cry and dance and, oh, I believe God. You believe he's able. You believe he's capable. But receiving it means he's going to do it for me. Okay, that's the next level. Then you have to say it, you gotta confess it. Your words have to line up with God's word. What comes out of your mouth has to line up with what has come out of God's mouth. Because by doing so, you are authorizing whatever you are saying with your tongue, you are authorizing to happen in your life. That's why if you keep cursing and you keep speaking negative things and you keep speaking uh, the the things you hate about your search uh, your your uh, situation and your circumstance and you keep uh, speaking your worst nightmares and your fears that's why they happen because you're authorizing it with your tongue <clears throat> because death and life are in the power of tongue so you have to believe it you have to receive it, you have to say it but then you have to obey it what does that mean that means that you put you have to put some works behind your faith so in other words if God tells you to start a business and you actually believe that and you receive that and you say it, you have to go get your number from the government website. You have to open up your business checking account. You have to get a name <clears throat> for your business. You have to create your content. You have to have a marketing strategy. You have to do all that. You have to put some works behind your faith. Okay? You got to believe it. You got to receive it. You got to say it. And you got to obey it. Okay? So with that in mind, let's take a look again at Psalm 3. And we will see the promises of God. Because this is what we need in our lives. First off, it says, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Okay, stop. Stop listening to these people that tell you that you're not going to have any enemies if you follow God and stop listening to these people that tell you you're not going to have to fight. Yes, you are going to have enemies. and Yes, you are going to have to fight. Okay, I know it would be nice if giving birth to the will of God was always as simple as as a simple straight line with no fights and no conflicts. But sometimes you have to fight even your own flesh. You're gonna to have to fight to give birth, okay? And David is saying here, now to give you a little bit more background on this Psalm in particular, David wrote this Psalm when he was fleeing from his son Absalom. 
If you don't know that story, long story short, when David sinned with Bathsheba and had sex with a married woman and then got her pregnant and then had her husband killed, and then they had the funeral for her husband Uriah, then David moved Bathsheba into the palace. And God sent Nathan to pronounce judgment on King David because all that what he did was wrong. One of the things that God said was going to happen to David was God go, was going to raise up judgment out of his own house. So David had a lot of problems with his kids after he had that thing with Bathsheba. Like, for example, one of his sons raped one of his daughters. <clears throat> his son Absalom rebelled against him to the point of trying to kick him off the throne, and he did. And he tried to take over the kingdom, and Absalom did for a while. Absalom rebelled against his father and took over the kingdom and put his father out. And David was on the run for his life from his son Absalom, because that was part of his judgment for having Uriah killed and sleeping with Uriah's wife. That's where this psalm comes from, okay? So also, you ought to understand that means that you can pray to God even when you wrong. <laughs> even if you wrong, even if what happened is your fault, you can still pray to the Lord. And King David says, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Uh, it may not be foes. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later because something significant is in there. It may be circumstances, but you feel like a whole bunch of things have, have risen up against you. And dealing with this pandemic, we are dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. Verse 2 says, many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Oh, how people love to rag their tongues if it looks like you're going through something. If it looks like you're going through something and they're not sure what it is, you know what they're going to do? They're going to fill in the gaps, and they're going to fill in the gaps with gossip. They're going to say, well, I think this and I think that. So this means this and this means that. So I haven't seen them in church for a while before the pandemic. So that must mean they backslid. Maybe they was having problems with their car, but people don't give you the benefit of the doubt like that. So if you haven't been to church in a while, they're going to say, hmm, maybe they ain't living for the Lord no more. Or maybe they changed membership. I guess they don't go here no more. All this is before the pandemic. Maybe you was just having car problems. Maybe it was as simple as that. Maybe you hadn't backslid. Maybe you hadn't turned your back on your faith. Maybe you were just having car problems. But people ain't going to do that. They're not going to give you the benefit of the, of the doubt. They're also not going to ask you directly. They're going to ask side people. <laughs> They're going to try to slide in to the people that's in your life and try to pump them for information. They're not going to ask you directly, okay? They're going to assume. They're going to fill in the gaps. They're going to try to, to pump other people in your life for information. They're going to do all kinds of stuff, okay? Because that's the nature of people. And David said, many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. In other words, they're saying you're done. They're saying, you're done, you're not going to recover, you're not going to come back from this, this is it for you, okay? <clears throat> but King David said in verse 3, Psalm 3, 3, but you, Lord, are a shield around me. How do we know that's true? Because David wasn't dead. <laughs> if God hadn't shielded him, Absalom would have killed him. Absalom also would have prevailed to take the throne, and David would have never gotten it back, because eventually he got it back. But David said, you, Lord, are a shield around me. Now, David said that even though he was wrong. David said that even though he was running from his own flesh and blood. David said that even though he's the one that caused all this, the domino effect of sin and death, David sinned, and then it produced all this death in his life. It's his fault. And he said, God, you steal my shield. Uh, my glory, the one who lifts my head high, I'll call out to the Lord, and he, and he what? And he answers me from his holy mountain. Stop. So right there, uh, whoever I'm talking to, whoever this is for, you need to understand that even if you wrong, you still need to cry out to the Lord. Even if you are on the run from your own flesh and blood, you might be having problems with your parents. You might be having problems with your children. You might be having problems with your siblings. If that's where you find yourself as you're listening to this message today, you can still call out to the Lord because God will still be a shield around you. How do we know that the Lord is actually shielding us? Because what we think is that if God was shielding me, why is there all this trouble? If God wasn't shielding you, that trouble would have overwhelmed you. That trouble would have overtaken you. 
that trouble would have taken you out by now if God wasn't shielding you, okay? You can still cry out to the Lord even when you wrong, even when it's your fault. And then King David says, and he answers me from his holy mountain. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that you can't allow guilt or shame or fear to make you think that God won't answer you even in the time of trouble, even if the trouble's your fault. Some of y'all looking at me right now, you having trouble, see, because I'm hearing it in the spirit. Some of y'all having troubles in your marriage. And some of y'all know good and well, some of that trouble is your fault. You can still cry out to the Lord. You can still claim that God is a shield because if God wasn't shielding you, you would have been swallowed up by now. And you can still get an answer from the Lord even when you're in trouble, even when you're on the run, okay? Then it says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Stop. That's verse five. What does that mean? That means that you don't have to stay up all night having a nervous breakdown just because there's trouble. Even if there's trouble on every side, you can still lay down and get some rest. Why? Because the Lord is sustaining you, not you are sustaining yourself. Then it says, I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Stop. That's verse six. David said, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to give in to fear even though tens of thousands. David said, if there's armies of people and if they're assailing me, that means they're coming against me, they're attacking me, they're fighting me. And then he said, on every side. Have you ever had trouble on every side? I have. I know exactly what that feels like. What does that mean, trouble on every side? It means trouble in every area of your life. Trouble in your mind, your thoughts ain't right. Or you got migraines or headaches, you can't think straight. Trouble in your soul, your emotions are trouble, okay? Trouble in your body, dealing with health issues. Trouble in your relationships, in the social area of your life. Trouble on your job, trouble with your finances. Trouble spiritually because you're dealing with demons or you might be dealing with Satan himself. I have been there, okay? I know what it's like to have trouble on, it. when I say every side, I mean every side, I know what that feels like. So you might be in a situation as you're listening to me now to where you look at every area of your life and it looks like it's just trouble, okay? So stop listening to those people that tell you that that can't happen to you because you're a Christian. Yes, it can. Sometimes it's the enemy attacking. Sometimes it's some stuff you did. Sometimes it's some consequences. Sometimes, like Joseph, maybe it's not anything you did at all, but it's the wickedness of the people around you, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, Okay? But if you are assailed on every side, King David says, do not give in to fear, even if you're surrounded by armies of people that are attacking you in every part of your life. Then we get to verse seven, arise, Lord, deliver me, my God, strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. All right. Now, <clears throat> David said, arise, Lord. He said, arise, Lord. Okay, he said, arise, Lord. In the Hebrew, that word arise means to rise, stand up, or stand. So in other words, King David said, Lord, I need you to stand up for me. Lord God, I need you to stand up for me. I need you to stand up for me. I need you to stand up for me. Why? Because the Lord is the only one with the authority. Why? Because the Lord is the only one with the power. Why? Because the Lord is the only one who has the name to where every other name must bow, whether it be governmental or provincial or civic or social or diseases or demons or whatever it is. The only one that has the name that every other name has to bow to is Jesus. So King David is saying, God, I need you to stand up for me. Okay, I need you to stand up for me. I need you to stand up for me. Then he says, <clears throat> deliver me. Okay, deliver me. Deliver me. Okay, in Hebrew, that word deliver, I'm looking at Strong's Concordance 3467. So you can look it up yourself and so you can know I'm not just making this stuff up, I'm not just pulling it out of thin air. Okay, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Entry number 3467 in the Old Testament in Hebrew, that word, that phrase, deliver me, says to be open, wide, free, to be safe, 
to uh, free or to sucker or secure, depending on how you pronounce that. You know what that means? <clears throat> that means get me out of this. <laughs> it says to open wide, to be open, because the mark of the devil is bondage. The mark of the spirit of Pharaoh is bondage. The mark of the kingdom of the world, of Egypt, of Babylon, is bondage. Okay? That's how you know it's from the enemy. That's how you know it's from the kingdom of darkness, because it's putting you in some kind of jail, mentally, emotionally. That's what unforgiveness does. That's why the devil wants you to stay in bitterness, because unforgiveness, mentally and emotionally, puts you in jail to whatever happened to you. Some of y'all looking at me right now, you mad at some stuff that happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago. The person that did that stuff to you then went on about their business, and you still mad because the enemy's got you in a prison of unforgiveness. <clears throat> and God wants to bring you out. It says to be open wide. That means it's not restricted. You're in a wide space. Have you ever been claustrophobic? Have you ever been in a tight, enclosed space where you felt like everything was enclosing in on you? But David said, I want you to make my space wide. Make me free. Make me safe. Okay, make me safe. That means I'm not surrounded by threats. Okay. And then he says this right here. After he says, arise, stand up. After he says, make me open, free, making me safe. Then he says, strike all my enemies on the jaw. One more time. He says, strike. Okay all my enemies on the job. Looking up that word, that phrase, my enemies in Hebrews, you know what it means? It says hating an adversary, an adversary. So that phrase we use haters, we didn't make that up. That's not new, already in the Bible. That's why I tell you all the time, I don't listen to people that talk about the Bible's ancient, it's archaic, it's old, it's not relevant, blah, 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 blah. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, that phrase that we use, haters, is already in the scripture. Okay, that word, my enemies, <coughs> it means hating. People that's hating on you, people that don't wish you well, people that don't have your best interests at heart, people that don't want you to succeed, people that don't believe in your vision, people that don't believe in your marriage. Some of y'all got a relatively good marriage. Some of y'all got a real handsome spouse, real pretty spouse. Some of y'all got some money. Some of y'all got some blessings. And there's some people around you that hate you because you're blessed. They make it their business to try to make you feel bad about who you are. That's how you know a hater. And some people are professional haters. A lot of professional haters on social media, okay? The professional haters are people where they hate on folks for a living. Like that's all they do all day every day is just hate on folks for a living. But they hate you because you're blessed. They make it their, I'm going to say it again, they make it their business to try to make you feel bad about yourself, okay? As if you could have been anybody else. <laughs> Woo, that's how you know a hater. They hate you because you you, as opposed to what? As opposed to you coming out of the womb, being somebody else? Who else are you supposed to be? God made you who he wanted you to be, okay? And they hate that. King David said, Strike all my enemies, my enemies, my haters on the jaw, the cheek or the jawbone. Then he says, break the teeth, break the teeth. The word break there means to break or to break in pieces. Teeth is obviously your teeth. It also means ivory or cliff of the wicked. Okay. Now, let me say this right here. And I've been wanting to say this for a long time, for a long time. And the Holy Ghost gave me this to say. <sighs> Let me look up the scripture first so you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. The scripture that I'm referring to is, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of, the, against wor of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians 6.12. Okay, I want to be sure I quoted it all correctly. Okay, that's Ephesians 6 and 12. I'm so tired of Christian people and religious people trying to pretend that all of our enemies is just the devil, that is just demons. 
You don't just have to fight Lucifer, Satan, the adversary. You don't just have to fight demons, unclean spirits. You have to fight wicked people. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so tired of people taking Ephesians six twelve and taking it out of out of balance because every principle that you have in the Bible has balance. So in other words, if you see a commandment or a principle going one way, there's another commandment or principle or experience in the scripture that goes the other way to bring balance, to bring balance. That's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 4 when the devil told him in the second temptation, why don't you throw yourself off of the cliff and God will catch you because God promises you angelic protection because the devil quoted scripture to Jesus and said he's going to give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They bear thee up in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone. So the devil told Jesus, why don't you go ahead on and throw yourself off the mountain? And what did the Lord say? The Lord said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In other words, what Jesus was saying is just because God promises you angelic protection, it doesn't mean you should do foolish things like throw yourself off of a mountain and demand that God catch you. See, because the Lord was in balance. He was saying, just because God promises to protect me, okay, it does not mean, it does not mean that I can do foolish things and throw myself off a mountain. So why do I say all that? I say all that because people have preached and taught Ephesians 6, 12 so hard that they've taught it out of balance. You are not just dealing with the devil. We are dealing with the devil and we are dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places and we are dealing with principalities and powers just like the scripture says, just like Paul says. But just like King David said, you're also dealing with wicked people. You are also dealing with haters. You are not just dealing with demons. You're dealing with people whose hearts are full of the devil. You're dealing with people whose hearts, they've given themselves to the flesh. You're dealing with people that don't sleep. They're not happy until, <laughs> it's not funny. They're not happy until they've messed up somebody's day, until they've messed up your apple cart, until they've made you cry, until they've made you angry, okay? Those are wicked people. Those are people that delight in destroying that which is God is building. If you don't believe that's true, if you think I'm making that up, read the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was charged by God because God put it in his heart. Nehemiah was cupbearer for the king, and Nehemiah was dealing with the aftermath of the captivity and the Jews that were coming back to Jerusalem. And when Nehemiah saw the state of the nation and the fact that the wall was torn down, it broke his heart. So God put in Nehemiah's heart to rebuild the wall. And you know what? Nehemiah had enemies that came and made fun of him every day while he was rebuilding that wall. Nehemiah literally had to build with one hand and fight with the other. Go read the book of Nehemiah, because I don't have time to read the whole thing now. But you see what I'm talking about, about how he wasn't just dealing with demons. Nehemiah was not just dealing with demons. He was dealing with people that's full of demons, people that's full of the devil, but he had to deal with wicked people. And I'm so tired of people preaching Ephesians 6.12 out of balance to make you think that it's just unclean spirits. You do have to deal with unclean spirits. You do have to break the power of the devil. The power of the devil has already been broken by the cross of Christ. But you also don't have to deal with folk that are wicked and evil in their heart. So right here, <clears throat> that's when King David says in verse 7, break the teeth of the wicked. Sometimes God is going to have to, because it says they break the teeth, uh, strike all my enemies of the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. Sometimes God going to have to slap folk. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like me saying it because you think it's unchristian. But it's in the Bible, which, which means that what you have is religion. Because the word of God is what God says, not what you heard in your denomination. And the word of God says you can pray to God that God need to break the teeth of the wicked. God need to slap your enemies on the jaw. Because for you to be delivered, sometimes God got to slap some folk. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in my life. And some of y'all looking at me right now, you've seen it too. You've seen the Lord slap some folk. You ain't never been slapped till the Lord slap you. 
Let me say that one more time. You ain't never been slapped until the Lord slapped you. I've seen some people that made fun of the saints, made fun of Christians, throwing some of their mistakes in their face. I've seen them get killed. I've seen them get killed by cars. I've seen them get struck with sick sickness. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I've seen the Lord slap people. I've seen the Lord move people out the way because sometimes God got to slap folks on the jaw. So stop thinking you do need to fight the devil. We are, we do have to fight the devil. We are fighting Satan. We are fighting his legion of demons. We are fighting the unclean spirits, but sometimes it's folks, wicked folks that are hating on you that don't mean you any good. And the Bible says that you got to pray. You don't raise your hand you don't have to raise your hand. Sometimes you can't raise your hand. You don't raise your hand. You ask the Lord to strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. That's the way you need to pray. I know some of y'all don't like it. I know some of you gonna say sacrilegious. I know some of y'all gonna call me a false prophet. I don't care because it's in the word, okay? And I'm not arguing with God about his word. That is idolatrous blasphemy. That's telling the maker that what he said ain't true. That's telling the maker that he said it wrong. I ain't doing that. You can do that if you want to. I'm not being no idolatrous blasphemer. And the words say, arise, O Lord, Psalm 3, 7, arise, O Lord, deliver me, my God, strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. Because sometimes you got to pray to God for deliverance from wicked people. And it's not about you raising your hand. It's about letting the Lord slap them right on the jump. Then verse eight, it says, from the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. The Bible just told you that if you want to be delivered, it's going to have to come from the Lord. Okay, another translation says salvation belongs to the Lord. Okay, something saved, deliverance, aid, victory, prosperity, that comes from the Lord. That ought to tell us something, that if we want the prosperity, if we want the deliverance, if we want the aid or the help, if we want to be saved, we can only get it from the Lord. That's why you can't listen to the devil. That's why you can't listen to demons. That's why you can't listen to wicked people. They're gonna try to talk you out of your faith. They're gonna try to tell you, oh, ain't nothing to that God thing. They're gonna try to tell you, oh, ain't nothing to the Bible. They're gonna try to get you to give up. They're gonna try to talk you out of Staying connected to the only one that can help you, which is Christ. Because when you got trouble on every side, can't nobody else help you but the Lord. Ain't nowhere else to go but the Lord. And the scripture says, Psalm 3, 8, that salvation belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. The, the, Lord. the word there in Hebrew is Yahweh. And that's the proper name of the God of Israel. David said, help, deliverance, aid, and prosperity belongs to Yahweh. That's literally what the Bible says. What that means is that you're not going to be able to get it from any other source. And as believers, we don't have to get it from any other source, but we do have to appropriate it by faith. And then he says, may your blessing, may your benediction, your prosperity be on your people. Okay? And, uh, as, and then it says, Salah. Okay? That means a pause. They pause so they can shout. Whenever you see Salah in the Bible, that means they stop singing so they can give him glory, so they can shout. That's what Salah means if you didn't know that. Okay, so it says, may your blessing be upon your people. What blessing, what benediction, what prosperity? That would be the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that Jesus died to give us. Jesus died to restore everything that Adam lost through the curse, and God established that through his covenant with Abraham. But under the New Testament, all who believe are children of Abraham. That's why he's called the father of, uh, father of the faithful. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right hand, okay? And so that means the prosperity, the restoration, fertility, wealth, riches, silver and gold, cattle, good marital relationships, land, that's not talking about going by and by to some pie in the sky when you die. That's talking about right now. That's the benediction God has spoken over you. Wealth, riches, fertility, 
good marriages, long life, health, lands, cattle, sheep, entrepreneurship. Abraham had all that, okay? So if you are born again, the blessing of Abraham is upon you now through Jesus Christ, through faith. That's why the devil and wicked people keep attacking your faith. They keep trying to get you to not believe because the only way the scripture established that the only one who has deliverance is the Lord, Yahweh, the God of Israel, okay? But the only way to get said deliverance into your life is through faith. You have to pull it from the invisible to the visible. What'd you say? I said, you have to pull it from the invisible to the visible. That's how you get it in your life. That's why some Christians get it and some Christians don't. Okay? On a scale of one to 10, if you are still at level one in your faith, you're still talking like you're a victim. You're still talking like, well, whatever God wants to happen is going to happen. You're still at a level one of faith. That's entry level faith. That's enough faith to get you born again, to get you into the kingdom. But once you get in the kingdom, you got some giants to fight. You got some wicked people to fight. You got some situations that are bigger than you to fight. Your faith got to come up to higher levels of faith. If you're still saying things like, well, whatever the Lord wants to happen, that's incorrect. You have something to do with the perfect will of God being manifested in your life. It is not a matter of God's desire because it's in the scripture, because Father sent us Jesus, because Jesus gave his life. Jesus went back to heaven and then sent us the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost is here to abide with us forever. So they have proven that they are willing, that they're with us, that God is for us and not against us. Then how come different Christians get different results? Because according to your faith, so it is unto you, not according to God's faith. That's what you wish the scripture said. You wish the Bible said according to God's faith, so it is unto you. Then everybody would have, it, have everything all the time. No Christian would have a bad marriage. No Christian would die too soon. No Christian would be living in sin. No Christian would be sick. No Christian would be broke if it was according to God's faith. Can't you see that? Can't you see that if it was all on God, if it was all up to God, there's not one of us that would be out of the perfect will of God all the time. But that's not it. It's not according to God's faith. It's not according to God's desire. He's already proven he wants to give it to us because Father gave Jesus and Jesus gave his life and then Jesus gave the Holy Ghost and then the Holy Ghost gives anointing. The Holy Ghost gives words of wisdom, understanding. The Holy Ghost gives power. They steady giving. They already proven they wanted us to have it. As Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. They've already proven they want us to have it. So what's the difference between Christians? The difference is, according to your faith, so it is unto you. That means you have to do the four things I said. If you want it to manifest in your life, you got to believe it. And that's why I'm prophesying. And that's why I'm teaching. You got to believe it, but that means you got to hear it from somebody sent by God to release the word. Because it's got to be the anointed word of God. It's got to be the rightly divided word of God. <clears throat> That's why I prophesy and teach out of scripture. So, you know, I'm not just making this stuff up. Even when I get a prophetic word from the Lord, the prophetic word is rooted in the written word. So, you know, I'm not just making it up. I'm not just pulling stuff out of thin air. It's right there in the scripture. So somebody's got to preach it, prophesy, teach it to you so you can hear it. But once you hear it, you got to believe it. Because the devil's going to do everything he can to snatch it out of your heart. You got to believe it. And believing it means you believe such a thing is possible. But then you've got to receive it. <laughs> That's step two. Re receiving it means it's possible for me. It's possible in my life. And that's where a lot of Christians fall short. Because they believe God can do it, but they don't believe that God will do it for me. And that's why you're sitting there. That's why when Goliath came up against the armies of Israel, Goliath strutted around for over a month. The Bible says 40 days. Goliath cursed them and made fun of them and shamed them because them, them trained warriors, well, them trained warriors, them soldiers, the armies of Israel, they were scared of Goliath. That man is eight, nine feet tall, had a spear that weighed 100 pounds. They scared him. 
So somebody had to come up, young David had to come up with some faith. Then he had faith to go against Goliath in the name of God. And David said what God was going to do. And David said what he was going to do. He said, this day, the Lord is going to deliver you to me and I'm going to cut your head off and the birds are going to feed off your flesh. David said it. Then he did it. Then he threw the stone and God put his hand behind the stone throw. Okay? And that's what knocked Goliath out because you can't throw a stone hard enough to sink into somebody's head. A bullet can do that, but you can't do that with your bare hand. David had faith, so you got to believe it, but then you got to receive it. You got to believe it's true for me. Okay? And then you got to say it. You got to confess it. You have to confess it. You got to confess it. You got to say it. You got to let your words be the same as God's words because you have to authorize. Whatever you are constantly letting come out your mouth, you are authorizing. Do you understand that? You are authorizing with your tongue whatever's going to happen in your life. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, whatever you say, you going to have what you say. You gonna have what you say, you gonna have what you say, okay? You're going to have what you say. That's why you got to make sure that what's coming out of your mouth is what God has said. That's why you hear me say it all the time. If it's in the Bible, you can say it. If God said it, you can say it. Problem with that is you gonna have to break the spirit of religion. There's a whole bunch of stuff you gonna see in the Bible. You gonna never hear in church. Yeah, I said it. There's a whole bunch of stuff you're going to hear in the Bible. You're going to never hear religious people say. You are never, ever, ever going to hear it come out of religious people's mouths. You are never, ever, ever going to hear it in church. But it's in the Bible. So you're going to have to make a choice. Okay? That's why God told you your blessings come with persecution. Who, who was Jesus' biggest set of enemies? The religious people. That doesn't tell you anything. God turned himself into a man, and the people that hated him the most was the religious people. That don't tell you nothing. So once you start saying what's in the Bible, you gonna have some haters. Not you might have some haters. You're gonna have some haters. Just like I know some folks are gonna talk about me because I'm teaching strike them on the jaw. That's the scripture, whether you like it or not. You've been taught that victim Christianity that tells you that however much abuse you can take and still keep smiling is what makes you say, that ain't what the Bible say. That ain't what Jesus did. That ain't what the Lord did. That's not what the Lord did. The Lord was never defeated. I know we, we, we can talk about his passion when he died on the cross, but now I'm talking about during his three and a half year ministry when he was walking around preaching and teaching, he was never defeated. He never let people stand there and abuse him and kept smiling and say, I got to prove how saved I am. That ain't the way the Lord lived. You've been taught that victim Christianity that told you that your salvation, your savedness, is based on how much abuse you can take and still keep smiling. Now, you do have to stay in love. You do have to keep loving, but loving does not make you a victim. Loving actually puts you in charge of the situation. God tells you to love and forgive because that means you're sowing love and forgiveness. That means you have to reap it, number one. Number two, God never said that there is no justice, and God never said that there is no vengeance. God said vengeance is mine. So that's what King David is saying in Psalm 3. I'm dependent on the Lord to do the smiting on the jaw. I'm dependent on the Lord to bring vengeance. I'm dependent on the Lord to deliver me. You got to believe it. You got to receive it. You got to say it. Anything in the scripture, make sure you get the right interpretation, that you get the rightly divided word of truth. You got to say what God is saying. And as soon as you start saying what God is saying, you're going to get some haters. And the first group of people that are going to hate you are the religious people, okay? Because half of the religious people that you know don't even read the Bible. Did you know that? Did you know that half of the religious people you know don't even read the Bible? They make up stuff and call it God. That's why there's no power in it. As the scripture says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, that's religious folks. They go through the motions. They look all religious and deep and spiritual. They making stuff up and calling it God. That's why I don't have no power. That's why when you get in trouble, I want you to know this. Religious people don't have nothing for you. Like Job's friends. You get sick. You get in an accident. You get a broken bone. You get broke. You get out of money. You get in anything like that. I want you to notice that religious people don't have nothing for you. 
that doesn't tell you anything because there's no power in what they say. Okay, the power is in what God says. So you got to believe it, you got to receive it, you got to say it, and then you got to obey it. And as I said, obeying it means you got to put some works behind your faith. That's what the book of James teaches, that, that this is how we authorize by our confession. But then if God tells you to do something, remember uh, that in the Old Testament, whenever they fought a battle, the Lord would always tell them to do something. He would tell them to march. He would tell them to march in a circle. He would tell them to break lamps or pitchers. He would tell them to shout. He would tell them to stomp on the ground. He would tell them to do something, okay? When God delivered Israel from Pharaoh chasing them, and Moses cried out to God, Moses was like, there are red seas in front of me, and Pharaoh is behind me. You have to come up with something. <laughs> and Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord said, stretch out your rod. What's that in your hand? Moses had to do something. Did you notice that the Red Sea didn't part until Moses stretched out his rod? Because God will always give you something that you have to do as part of your faith. You got to add some works to your faith. You got to do something. You got to obey what the Lord tells you to do. And it might sound crazy. It might look like God might tell you to start rejoicing. Just start rejoicing. I remember <clears throat> just this week, I was dealing with some stuff and the Holy Ghost said, just laugh at the devil. I said, what'd you say, Holy Ghost? He said, just laugh at the devil. And I just started laughing. Ha, 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 devil. Ha, 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 devil. And he backed up off me because the Holy Ghost said laugh. Now to the natural mind, that's... but the Holy Ghost said, just laugh. Okay, is that in the Bible? Yes, Psalm 2 and 2. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. So you got to believe it. You got to receive it. You got to say it and you got to obey it. That's how you pull the promises of Psalm 3 into your life. Arise, O Lord, save me, deliver me, let me sleep at night, set me free in a wide place, give me prosperity, okay? Break the jaw, smite my enemies on the jaw, slap them all up on the jaw, okay? Because deliverance and prosperity and help comes from you, comes from the Lord, all right? Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> That's our prophetic word for today. Praise God. I'm encouraged by that word. I needed that word, and I trust that you did too. All right? When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Lord, is there anything else he wants me to release? So here we go. Okay? What the Holy Ghost just told me to say was, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, that lines up with scripture. Lines up with scripture we just read. David said, the 10,000 people around me sailing me. David said, I will not fear. The Spirit of God just told me to say, don't be afraid. So whoever that's for, whoever watches this broadcast, whoever's watching me live, whoever's watching the replay, whoever's listening to me on the podcast, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, okay? Because fear and faith can't live in the same space, okay? So what that means is that you got to believe it, you got to receive it, you got to say it, you got to obey it. And then God will move, God will deliver you, God will set you in a wide place. God will break you out of whatever is surrounding you, whatever's around you, and give you deliverance, okay? And when that happens, you got to be sure to give him the glory, you got to be sure to give him praise, you got to be sure to give your testimony. You got to tell somebody why. Because somebody else needs their faith encouraged, somebody else needs their faith strengthen. That's why. Okay. So when God delivers you, praise him. Just stop wherever you are. Throw your hand up, say a prayer, cry, praise the Lord, dance, however you do it. Do it like you do it, but praise him and give the word of your testimony. The more you talk about what God has done, the more it builds your faith for what God will do for you in the future. One more time. The more you talk about what God has done, the more it strengthens and builds your faith for what God will do. So the next time you up against a giant, all you got to do is rehearse the last giant he helped you beat. And that's what's going to help you beat the next giant. All right? Amen, amen. All right. Now, y'all know I don't do this for money. Y'all know I do this because God called me to do it. But if you want to sow into my ministry, you can sow. You know, many ways to give. Uh, my Zell is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. 
You can give them my cash app. My cash app is dollar sign DMT2, uh, two capitalized, not the number two, DMT2. If you want to give them my cash app, my PayPal, ProfitDavidTaylor at gmail.com. My third quarter prophetic devotional is finally out. I had a lot of trouble getting that devotional together. I can't even explain to you the kind of things I had to fight through to get my devotional available. That means it's going to bless a lot of people. That means it's going to be a blessing. If the enemy is fighting me getting it out there, that means that the Lord is going to take it and use it and it's going to bless many. So I'm decreeing a blessing over my third quarter prophetic devotional. So it's available right now. The link is on my Facebook page, but I'll put another link on my Facebook page and on my Twitter and on my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, so you can uh, pick that up. Those are available. Uh, it has, there's one edition without a writing page. So it just goes page to page and you can write on there on a journal. But there's another edition that has a blank page after each daily scripture. So you have more place to write notes or whatever it is you want to write. Okay. So that's out. I got more music coming. Got more hymns, hymns coming. Remember, I release a new hymn on the first Friday of every month, and I got a whole bunch of new gospel music that I'm working on. So got a lot of stuff going on. So whenever you sow into my ministry, it uh, helps me uh, create all that and helps me disseminate all that. And remember, whoever's ministry you sow into, then some of their blessing and some of their anointing and some of their mantle gets on you. So if you sow into a prophet's ministry, your prophetic will increase. Okay, <clears throat> your prophetic will definitely increase. Amen. If somebody bless me right now, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. So uh, your prophetic anointing will increase. Your visions will increase. Your understanding of the world will increase. All that. Okay. All right. Amen and God bless you. Thank you so much to those of you that watch me live. Thank you so much to those of you that are watching on the replay. Thank you so much to those of you that share the video. Thank you so much to those of you that are watching me on YouTube. Now remember on YouTube, I have a new format. I have a brand new format on YouTube where I'm there teaching like you see me now, but also the scriptures are up on the screen uh, so you can look them up for yourself because you need to know the word of God for yourself. You need to look it up for yourself. Okay. All right. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you so much. So I'll be here uh, next Sunday. Same time. Man, July is almost over. Huh. Next Sunday is the last Sunday in July. July is gone, y'all. I'll be here next Sunday, same time, 2.30 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time, okay, for the next weekly live prophetic word. And remember, if you want to find out or you want to look at everything I'm doing, all of it's on my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. All my books, all my music, all my podcasts, all my weekly live prophetic word, all my videos, all my No More Genies, everything in my prophetic ministry, my field work, everything in my prophetic ministry is on my website. Okay, and then I answer a lot of your questions on my website, like what's the difference between a false prophet and a real prophet? How do you know the difference? What does it mean to be a prophet? How do we recognize the prophetic? How do I know what my gift is? All of that is answered on my website. I got all those pages on there on my website for free. Okay, no charge. So definitely go to my website, check it out, prophetdavidtaylor.org. Okay, God bless you. Thank you again so much. I love you. And remember, we got we this week. I mean, right now today, not this week, but right now today. We're gonna start right now this moment. We're gonna believe it. We're gonna receive it. We're gonna say it, and we're gonna obey it. And the word of God is gonna get pulled into our lives. God's gonna stand up and deliver us by faith. Amen and amen. And I will see you next time.